All right, to continue our lesson for hyperbolas, let's look at graphing a hyperbola given, given the equation. Remember to graph, we may need to put the equation into standard form. That might require us to complete the square for the x terms and the y terms. Remember you're looking for the x partner for the x squared term and the y partner for the y squared term to be able to complete the square. Remember that our standard form has everything equal to 1. And when we graph, it's going to be similar to graphing an ellipse. But instead of connecting those four points that go around the center in an oval, we're going to use those to draw the box. We're going to use the box to draw the asymptote. And then we'll decide whether to open the hyperbola up and down, vertically, or left and right, horizontally. So let's uh, give one a try here. This will be the first one that we're going to graph. And we notice that it's a hyperbola because it's got subtraction between the two terms. It's set equal to 1. And notice that the first variable we see, the positive variable, is the y squared, which means when we graph this, our hyperbola should open up and down vertically. So let's find the center. Remember, the center is the h and the k. Be careful. The h is paired with the x. So the center is negative 1, positive 3. Let's go ahead and plot that first. Center's right there. Okay. The horizontal distance, remember, is going to be the square root of the number underneath the x squared term. So we're going to come out 5 units to the right and make a point, 5 units to the left and make a point. And the vertical distance is the square root of the number that's underneath the y squared term. So we're going to come up two units and down two units. Very similar to an ellipse, right? But what we're going to do instead of connecting those into that oval shape is we're just going to draw a vertical and horizontal line through each of those points so that we come up with this rectangle. And then we're going to connect the corners of the boxes with the center and draw in those asymptotes. They're dashed lines because it's just really a guideline for our hyperbola. Okay? And remember how we find the slopes of those asymptotes. It's plus or minus the rise, which is 2 divided by the run, which is 5, or the vertical distance divided by the horizontal distance of 5. Okay. Now, all we have to do is sketch in our hyperbola. I'm going to grab a different color here. And our hyperbola, remember we said, opens vertically. So I'm using these two points at the top and bottom of my box as the vertices or vertex of each half of the hyperbola. And I just want to sketch in a curve that kind of looks like a parabola that's going to get close to those blue-green asymptotes, but they're not going to touch or cross the asymptotes. And there is our completed hyperbola. All right, so since this second example is in standard form. Remember, we can tell standard form because our equation is set equal to 1 here. Why don't you guys give this one a try on your own? Come back and check your graph when you've completed it. Pause the video, check your graph in just a moment. All right, so here's what your graph should look like. Uh, the center, remember, is the h and the k value. Remember, when we don't see a number that's added or subtracted in the parentheses, that value is 0, so our center is at 2, 0. The horizontal distance is the number underneath the x squared term. We're square rooting that. Since there's no number underneath, it's an understood 1. Square root of 1 is 1, so horizontal distance here is 1 unit. Vertical distance is the square root of the number underneath the y squared term. That's 3 units. This hyperbola opens horizontally because the x squared term is positive. So notice that each part in purple opens to the left and to the right. The vertices or the vertex of each half of our hyperbola 
is right on that box, and the slopes of the asymptotes are plus or minus the B value, which is 3, divided by the A value is 1. 3 divided by 1 is 3. How'd you do? Hopefully you did a good job. Make sure you jot down any questions to ask in class the next day. Now, let's go on to our very last example. You know it's going to be one where we we'll have to complete the square. All right, so here's one that's in standard form. We know it's in standard form because we can see the x squared has an x partner. The y squared has a y partner. There's a constant that will move over to the other side. And our equation is equal to 0. It's not equal to 1. So we know this is in general form, and we're going to have to complete the square. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is move the constant over to the other side. And then we're going to do some rearranging here. Because the x squared term is negative, we want the x's as the second variable in our equation. Notice that my y squared has a positive 4, so I'm going to write 4y squared minus 16y. Keep those like variables next to each other. Minus 9x squared minus 36x equals 164. Now, very much like ellipses, we're going to have to factor out these coefficients that are in front of the squared variables. So for the y terms, I'm going to factor out that 4, and I'm going to have leftovers of y squared minus 4y, and I'll find the number to complete the square for the y terms. For the x terms, now when I take that coefficient out of the second variable, I always want to take it out as a negative number. That's where my subtraction is going to come from. So I'm factoring out a negative 9 from the x terms. That's going to leave me with leftovers of x squared plus 4x. And I'll find the number to complete the square for the x terms. Now our equation was equal to this constant of 164. But remember, we're going to have to balance this number that we put over here for the y terms. So we're going to have plus 4 times that magic number for the y terms. And we're going to have to balance the number that we put in for the x terms. That number is being multiplied by a negative 9. So I'm actually subtracting 9 times that magic number for the y terms. So, no different than how we've been completing the square for anything else. To find our magic number, we are going to take the middle term coefficient, divide it by 2, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and then we're going to square that value and we're going to get a 4. So the 4 is what's going to balance the 4 on the left side for the y terms. And then the magic number for the x terms, we're going to take that 4 that's in the middle, divide it by 2, that gives us 2, and then we square the 2 and we get a magic number of 4 for the x terms. All right, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Now, we've got this trinomial here, and just like any other, we want to write it as the square of a binomial, so that's going to look like this, y minus 2 squared minus 9 times x plus 2 squared. And when I combine all of my like terms over here on the other side, what I really have is 164 plus 16 minus 36, and that gives me a constant of 144. Uh, sorry about that. I had a minor interruption. Uh, Anyway, here's what we ended up with as our constant, 144. And remember that 4 on hyperbola, we want our equation to equal 1. Just like with ellipses, we're going to divide every term by that constant that we got when we simplified. We'll divide everything by 144. And we'll do some reducing here. 144 and 4 reduced to 
y minus 2 squared over 36. 9 will go into 144 16 times, so my denominator here becomes a 16 under the x squared term. And my equation is going to be set equal to 1 now. So let's have you guys go ahead and take this standard form equation now and make a nice pretty graph. Pause the video, make your graph, find the slopes of your asymptotes, and come back and check your answer when you're ready. Okay, here's what your completed graph should look like. Notice that it opens vertically because the y squared term is positive. Uh, the center, be careful with your h and k. Remember the h is negative 2, the k is positive 2, negative 2, 2. Horizontal distance is 4 units. Vertical distance here is 6 units. And when we find the slopes of the asymptotes, the rise over run reduces to plus or minus 3 halves. You've now finished your last conic section. And uh, we're almost ready for a test. So make sure you have all of your standard form equations memorized uh, for the, the test. And you will have a little formulas quiz next class. Make sure you jot down any questions you have so you can ask them in class next time I see you. Good job, you guys.